you as a diplomat, isn't it insulting for you the way the diplomats are spoken out from Russia right now? Even uh, from their television uh, propagandist channels, they are saying, let's hit the bomb to Berlin, let's hit the bomb to France, Look. let's hit the bomb to Washington. You've heard it. Yes. So it's politicians talking, not just propagandists. So how is it insulting for you? So no, what's look, the answer of diplomat might be? Well, Boltoni Boltayot, Bol you know? <laughs> okay. uh, or maybe Duraki Boltayot. This is clearly a card the Kremlin's using. These people are all tools of the Kremlin. They are performing their assigned role of scaring the West, or of trying to scare the West. And it's even more sophisticated than that. You know, a, a lot of American uh, experts on Russia have Russian colleagues with whom they worked closely before Moscow began its war in Ukraine in 2014. And those Russian colleagues call their American colleagues and tell them, you better listen to Putin, he really will use those nukes. And they say, oh my God, Putin may use these nukes, Mike. The guy I've known for 30 years in Moscow is telling me that. Meantime, there are some Russians who are clearly part of the Kremlin team who say something quite sensible publicly. Three-star General Buzhansky said on one of those Russian TV programs, of course we're not going to use nukes. We'll use nukes if NATO is marching on Moscow. Um, and Dmitry Trenin, Nefesbichik, wrote a column like in December, explaining to his other Russian colleagues, you know, and he's actually not quite right about it. He said, you know, the threat is not working. The United States is still sending arms to Ukraine because they know we're not going to nuke them over this. And they're not going to nuke us over this. Well, let's make it clear. We are talking about the top officials of Russian Federation that's now intruding into Ukraine, doing everything to stay on their positions in their right. country. Most of them, well, all of them, let's be honest, have real estate in Europe, uh, in the United right. States, and other Western right. countries. They have right. hidden money there right. also. Right. So to make it clear, they will not risk everything to bomb European Union or other well, they're, they're, democratic they're, they're, countries that, just to lose everything that they're cr trying well, to that, yes. preserve. Right. right. No, that, that's true. But the point is, if they were to do that, there's no nothing else for the United States to do than to bomb Russia. So this becomes suicide. I and mean, I don't think even Putin wants to commit suicide. And it's very clear that this war, the big invasion of Ukraine, was a Putin decision, and it's not clear who besides his very closest inner circle, you know, the folks who are with him on that leak in, in the St. Petersburg area, support this. You know, when, when Putin met with his national security team, it was published, it was shown on video, mm -hmm. three days before the big invasion, yes. everyone was looking like this. No one was smiling. They didn't like what Putin was saying. And then, if you recall, two days after the invasion, on the weekend, there was another video of Putin meeting with Shoigu and Gerasimov, talking about how they were going to raise the nuclear alert level, and neither Shoigu nor Gerasimov was happy. But they are not happy right now, too. Still, That's the year right. passed, but they're not doing anything. They're, well, they're silently not... doing what Putin says. Right, because Putin still thinks he could win in Ukraine. But it's they a, are not uh, stupid, think, right? right? They are not stupid right. around him. Well, we don't know how they talk to each other. Sure. We, we have heard for several years that, you know, maybe when he was first president for a few years, Putin listened very seriously to others, but far less now. And, of course, that, that tells you something, too, about ability to provide him with good information, which could lead to an intelligent decision. But obviously the failure of the Russian military in Ukraine is already pushing Putin in what I consider to be the right direction, even if he's not ready to go there yet. But still he once said that so while they will be dying, we will get to the heaven. <laughs> you remember this? Still? Oh, no, no. This no, was no. To, that, that's for bluster. whom he was... That, that's bluster. That's just silly talk. Silly you know, talk. He's saying, we are right, they are wrong, yeah. therefore, yes, we may all die, but we're going to heaven and they're not going to heaven. I think God has a different fate in store for Mr. Putin, but I should not dare speak on behalf okay, of Okay, let's speak about the smart people, okay. because I remember this latest headline in the New York Times uh, about Putin. Right. He is the most dangerous fool. <laughs> so let's talk about smart people, about J7 and the meeting that was right. lately, one week ago, and the speeches that were pronounced by the leaders of this uh, state. So I would like to quote, for example, French President Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he said that it's
it's a matter of honor to provide the French government aircraft to Vladimir Zelensky so that he would arrive on it at the J7 summit in Japan and change the rules of the game. So, did Zelensky change the rule of the game and in which way? I have criticized Macron and Paris um, already in this interview. Okay. And I'm saying that to point out that I think that was a very good thing Macron did. Um, first, when he received Zelensky in Paris as part of Zelensky's tour. And secondly, when he helped Zelensky get to Beijing, to Beijing, excuse me, to, to Tokyo and then Hiroshima. And beyond that, my understanding is that Macron was the reason why Lula finally agreed to meet with Zelensky, right, the president of Brazil. And Lula on this crisis has been a, a portrait in cowardice, basically bowing to the Kremlin and on other things bowing to Beijing. So that, those were all good things, and again, Macron deserves credit for that. Zelensky's trip to Hiroshima topped off a great week for Zelensky and for Ukraine on the diplomatic playing field. His trips to Italy, Germany, France, and the UK were yeah. terrific. He got, he basically sealed the F-16 deal with those trips, forcing the United States to change its position. And I'm hearing that he may have heard some positive things in Berlin regarding NATO. He moved the Germans, is what I'm hearing. I, I say I'm hearing, I'm not seeing, I'm hearing. So we'll, yes. we'll wait and Promises. see. Promises. Mm -hmm. We'll wait and see. And then the G7 was a triumph for Ukraine.